Today we are talking frame rate and shutter speed. Understanding these two concepts will instantly help you improve your drone footage and prevent it from looking stuttery and jerky during playback. But before we get to that, let's roll that intro. Remember, I'm uploading weekly content to help you get the best out of your equipment. So if you're new to this channel, then consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Many mistakenly think that shutter speed changes with the frame rate. This is simply not true. Let's look into the basics. Frame rate is simply the amount of frames that is captured per second. For 24 FPS, this means 24 frames evenly distributed over one second. The frame rate does not take into account the amount of light each frame is exposed to. Shutter speed is the duration each individual frame is exposed to light. With a higher shutter speed, the image will stay crisp and sharp. With lower shutter speed, we start to introduce blur. This happens because uh, the shutter stays open for a longer period of time and we are not able to fully freeze the frame. This phenomenon is called motion blur and this is quite natural to the eye. This is basically how the eye looks. So if you want to see it for yourself, you could just try and wave your hand in front of you and then you would naturally see the motion blur occurring. Regardless of the shutter speed, the amount of frames that are being played back is equal to the frame rate selected. Selecting the frame rate is often an artistic choice and it depends highly on what you want to do with the footage. Historically, Hollywood has always stuck to 24 frames per second with a few exceptions to get that cinematic look with a proper amount of motion blur. Why it ended up in 24 frames per second, there's probably many uh, explanations for that. But if you have proper insight on that topic, then uh, feel free to share your insights in the comment section below. 24 frames per second does not produce motion blur per default. It needs to be combined with a shutter speed set according to the 180 degree rule. If the shutter speed is set too fast, the footage will stutter and look jerky. This often happens uh, on drone footage if you let the drone automatically control the shutter speed. With higher shutter speed, the camera will start to capture uh, vibrations and micro movements of the drone and this will eventually make your footage look bad. You can avoid this by switching your camera into manual and applying the 180 degree rule where you basically keep the shutter speed as close as possible to the double of the frame rate. For 24 frames per second, this means around 50 or 1 over 50, depending on how your UI looks. In general, you have different frame rates available on your drone or camera. The options available are typically linked to the video standard selected. There are two standards, the American NTSC, PAL for the rest of the world. With PAL, the standard frame rate is 25 frames per second. With NTSC, it's a decision between 24 and 30 frames per second. Both standards offer a higher frame rates in some cases. Just to mention, with NTSC, the actual frame number is a pretty odd one, but your camera will most likely list it as 24 or 30 frames per second. I have included a link in the description below uh, if you want to go all nerdy understanding the difference between PAL and NTSC. When you think about it, it's actually amazing that technology limitations introduced in the early days still influences the way we make video today. You can basically select any base frame rate and combine it with the 180 degree rule and get smooth footage. I would recommend if you're in the US to go for either 24 or 30 frames per second and look what works best. If you're in Europe or in the rest of the world, I will choose 25. You should use the following shutter speed settings to get motion blur. You only need the higher frame rates of 50 and 60 frames per second if you want to slow down your footage in post-production. This video is made around uh, my use of DJI drones, uh, but uh, the principles are the same, so they apply to other brands and cameras as well. I have a final thing that I want to mention. You need to be really careful if you start uh, to mix footage in post-production with different frame rates. It's okay to take 24 FPS and drop it into a 30 FPS timeline, but it's not okay the other way around because your footage will stutter and look jerky because of frame skipping. The frame skipping happens because there's simply too many frames that can be uh, put into the 24 FPS timeline. The way to do it is always to take footage that has less frames and drop it into a timeline with more. I just wanted to mention this because this has caused some issues for me in the past. That's it. I hope you liked this video about shutter speed and frame rate. Uh, if you did, then uh, make sure to press the like button below because this really helps me understand if you want more of this kind of content. And who knows, 
you might have some additional tips that you want to add uh, in the comment section below. So please share your insights uh, with your fellow flyers from the drones and electric unicycle community. Have a nice day, consider subscribing and see you on the next one.